Okay, out of the gate, I'm gonna tell you, this is a fantastic release. This is, and I wanna show you all the intricacies of this too. This is a new release by Radiance Films in the US. I think it's available overseas too, but this is a US release, limited edition, 3,000 copies. I'm gonna do a lot of reading from the box on this. This is Cosa Nostra, which features Franco Nero in Three Mafia Tales, directed by Damiano Damiani. And wow, is this an excellent, excellent set. So uh, I put the graphic up, but you're, you're gonna see the box too. So this is what it looks like when you get it, minus the glare. This is a nice, a nice sturdy box, nice like textured finish. Uh, a little, as Radiance always does, there's the Japanese style obi strip, but this is still in the shrink wrap here other than the business end. So um, I like to keep things in the shrink wrap to keep them nice. So uh, the obi strip comes off, but it's got all the information there. And uh, wow, wow, this is a region A and B. So this will play in North America or in the UK. And what we have here, if you can see it, is uh, three Blu-rays and a sizable book. So we'll go through the Blu-rays that I've watched. I haven't actually read the book yet, but I'll give you a look at it. And uh, just, I mean, just look at that though. This is just gorgeous, uh, just art of Franco Nero here. And there are three Italian mafia films of a sort, but they're not Italian crime films. Like if you're a fan of Italian crime films, these are different than that. On, uh, there's an extra with Mike Malloy on one of these, the Euro crime film expert, where he breaks it down into three categories of film. And I'm gonna mess this up, but it was basically the the action film, the star-led vehicle, and the prestige film, something like that. And these fall mostly into the category of the, the star-led or the prestige film. They all feature Franco Nero as the lead, but they're not the slam bang, you know, insane car stunt movies that you would come to think from some of the other companies that have been releasing um, Italian action films. This is more along the lines of Radiance's uh, Iron Prefect that came out recently, which has some good action in it, but it's more of a thoughtful, you know, drama th thriller. So first up we have, uh, well, I'll do it in the order that I watched them. I don't know if these are necessarily chronological order. I, I kind of think they aren't, but this is the order that I watched them in. First up we have The Day of the Owl, which stars uh, three pretty decent sized names in this film. You have Franco Nero, you have Claudia Cardinale, and you have Lee J. Cobb, which was in the, in the, the art alone on these. Uh, Italian poster art was always just gorgeous. It almost doesn't matter the film or the era. It was just gorgeous. And I love that Radiance just loads these discs up with, uh, with the original poster art. And even what they even do in here too is they give you the reversible cover and you can see the US poster art. And in the U.S. it was called Mafia, and it really played up the Mafia crime thing, which um, is true, but makes it look like a little bit different kind of film than it really is. What this film is, um, and is, do we have a year here? 1968. Usually I have notes, and I'm looking over and under and all around. Here I'll just be looking down all the time. From 1968, it is, uh, you could listen to this in Italian or in English, um, what you get when you do that is you don't get a different version of the film. You don't get the American International Mafia version of the film, but you do get the English audio from that. So in that case, you would hear the English language version, which I didn't listen to, but I know you have uh, Lee J. Cobb doing his own voice. I think you get Franco Nero and probably Claudia Cardinale dubbing themselves throughout. Um, I, we watched the Italian version, so Italian with English subtitles, but it, it goes both ways, as they say. So uh, this film essentially opens with a murder. You see a trucker driving his his uh, truck through a winding Sicilian street somewhere, uh, not a street, it's more like a country road near a farm, and somebody shoots him, shotguns him a couple times, and then Franco Nero uh, shows up as an Italian investigator, police officer, let's say. He and a few other people are there to figure out who did it. And this whole film really is about, it's pretty low key, this whole film really is Franco Nero questioning people. Now, Claudia Cardinale comes in as she is the wife of the man who would have been present when the murder occurred, but is, is nowhere to be found. Her husband was a farmer. He, everybody is like, well, he should have seen it. He was right there. He should be the guy who saw it, uh, but he's not around. So let's, let's harass his wife into trying to find out A, where he is, or B, if he told her anything. She is uh, vowed to be faithful to Lee J. Cobb, who is the local mafia don or mafia boss, who really doesn't want anybody necessarily to know. He may or he may not know who did it, but he doesn't seem too interested in anybody finding out who killed this guy and why. And so the whole film is basically Franco Nero as this by-the-book cop trying to, very straight-laced, 
trying to go through the town and the townspeople and get anybody to tell him who did this and why. And it's just a whole lot of things about codes of silence and codes of respect and codes of, of, of mafia procedure and things like that, or just small town kind of organized crime. And I say mafia, and it's not like guys with pinky rings and shark skin suits and like you think about American mafia. It's not Goodfellas mafia. It's more, it's more Italian Sicilian mafia. It's a really good movie. It's a really good drama. Everybody in it is really good. And uh, I would I would recommend this one, Day of the Owl. Apparently, incredibly popular film, according to uh, the extras on this and according to Franco Nero. He says people talk to him still to this day all the time about this movie and how how as uh, it, it resonates with people who are in the, in the in the law in that section of the country and all that. So I'm going to read to you from from this text right here about uh, what the extras are. We get uh, there's a 2K restoration of the film from the original negative. It looks so good. The films on this set look so good. We have a nice big TV, uh, HD TV. I mean, obviously everybody does now, but it looked unbelievably good. Uh, and the film is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this, uh, I, I'm incorrect. You can watch uh, the original Italian version at 109 minutes and the shorter export cut with English audio at 103 minutes. So I think what they did is they just cut the master for the Italian version to conform to the English language version. So you don't see the English language titles or anything, but it's the same, it's what you would have seen essentially. It's just not a print of the English language version. Um, original uncompressed mono audio, new interview with Franco Nero featuring archive footage of Damiano Damiani and Leonardo Sascalia, I'm so sorry, 20, uh, from 2022, that's uh, 17 minutes. Archival interview with Franco Nero, writer Ugo Piro, and production manager Lucio Trentini from 2006. That's 27 minutes. This is a hefty amount. On each of these discs, there's probably extras and supplements that equal the duration of the films they're talking about when you total them all up. Uh, Identify Crime, SIS. Filmmaker and Italian crime cinema expert Mike Malloy discusses the Day of the Owl in the context of the formation of the Italian crime film genre. This is from 2022. That's 20 minutes. Excellent uh, feature, as they all are, really. Casting Cobb, A Tale of Two Continents, video essay by filmmaker Howard S. Berger, looking at uh, actor Lee J. Cobb's career transition from Hollywood to Italy and the archetypes he tended to play. That's brand new for 2023. It's 33 minutes. Archival interview with Claudia Cardinale from Belgian TV in which she discusses her long and storied career from 2017. 22 minutes. Interestingly done. She's in the back of a taxi cab and she's being interviewed by the taxi driver. Who I mean, it looks like it was a show that did that, but it was a really, she's super sweet and charming and it looks like she's like on the way to a gala event or something and there's you know lights inside the cab it looks like the cash cab show basically and uh, or taxi cab confessions if you will uh, then you have the trailer new and improved optionals english subtitles and italian audio and english subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing uh reversible sleeve featuring uh, designs based on the original posters so uh that is day of the owl that's what i consider to be disc one in this set disc two the way i watched it is the, clay, the case is closed. Forget it. Uh, as we were watching this throughout the film, I just kept going, case is closed. Forget it. This, uh, you can see at the back there, back, front, and once again, reversible sleeve with more original art. Very, very cool. So the basic story here is that Franco Nero, and this film is from 1971, so it's Two in, I'm watching these in order. Uh, Franco Nero, also mustacheless in the previous in this film. Just so you know, if you're keeping a mustache count on this, Franco Nero is, is clean shaven in both of these films. So Franco Nero plays an architect who is uh, this, accused of engaging in a hit and run. And while he's waiting to go to trial, he's thrown into prison. He's thrown into like the deep end of prison. And he's just this clean cut, normal, uh, uptight, classy guy who's thrown in with a bunch of murderers and, and criminals. And he has to sort of navigate his way through internal politics of the prison and the codes of the prison and try to basically survive intact to get to his trial that he professes he is innocent of doing anything and uh, deals with the internal workings of, again, a level of mafia inside the prison. Meets another guy who is wanted uh, by the mafia who's trying to survive. And it's a pretty gritty prison thriller, really. It's very good. Again, not action-packed, 
but very good. And they say in the extras that uh, Damiani hired non-actors. So one of the, the main guys in the prison was an actual guy who was in prison for murder, either at the time or had recently been you know, released, but not necessarily cleared. So a very good movie, very good prison film. Shocking to me to read that they built all the sets for this prison. It looks like they shot in a real prison in a prison yard, and it wasn't. It was sets that were built you know, for this film. So what do we have here? We have a 2K restoration of the film from the original negative presented with Italian and for the first time, English audio options, original uncompressed mono PCM audio, new interview with star Franco Nero from 2022, 14 minutes. He's just so cool. He's just so great. I've listened to him talk about anything. And we have additional documentary on the making of the film featuring actor uh, Corrado Solari, assistant director Enrique Burglar, it's fine print and my eyes are terrible. Uh, sorry about it, everybody about that. And editor Antonio Silinaro from 2015, that's 28 minutes. Italy's cinematic civil conscience and examination of the life and works of Damiano Damiani, a visual essay on the filmmaker by critic Rachel Nisbet from 2023, that's 35 minutes. The trailer, new and improved optional English subtitles for the Italian audio and English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing for the English audio and the reversible sleeve. This again, like everything in the set is region A and B. 106 minutes, 185, color, mono. Really good, solid movie. Then to the third film in the set. Uh, an instructional video entitled, How to Kill a Judge. That is great artwork. Again, the Italian posters. It looks like a giallo film. It's not a giallo film. It looks like a giallo film. It's just, it just looks great. You get some more of that interesting artwork on the back. And uh, Franco Nero and Francois Febian are the stars of this. And then the uh, looks like somewhat later artwork or later style of artwork on the inside there. So this film is from 1975. So I did watch them in order. They were placed in the case in this order. 1975, 111 minutes, 185 English and Italian language, mono in color, once again, region A and B. And this here film, Franco Nero plays a filmmaker. He may also be a journalist, but predominantly here, he's a filmmaker who makes a movie that basically is a character assassination of a well-known judge who maybe there have been some rumblings. The, the media, the press is trying to nail this guy for corruption and expose him on corruption charges. And what Nero does is he makes a, a film about a guy who's quite a bit like this judge, different name, looks just like him, quite a bit like this judge, and just basically exposes all of his ills in a very avant-garde, artistic, arty kind of way in this film. And the clips they show of the film he's made, the film within a film, are really cool. Like, I would love to see those. They're usually shown in the context of being like on the screening room screen or something like that. But I would love to see all of that footage like on, on a separate feature on the Blu-ray just to watch because it looked like a really kind of wild, interesting expressionistic kind of take on it. So basically Nero releases the film. He has called for a private meeting with the judge who just goes, smart guy, huh? How do you think this is going to work out for you, huh? You, 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 you enjoying your freedom there? And before you know it, not going to give too much away about this. The judge is murdered in the way he is murdered in the film. And now all eyes are taking a peek at Nero because it's like, hey, you made this movie about this guy and you really seem to not like this guy. And now this guy's dead just like he is in your movie. So then it becomes a thriller to find out who killed this judge and why. And Nero being, you know, pressed hard by the, and also Nero himself trying to partly clear his name, but also investigate, well, who did this? So it's Nero dealing with politicians and with the organized crime, let's say the mafia. Uh, and and uh, the police and all these other people, fellow journalists, and throughout, he's just looking for the truth. He doesn't want to play games. He doesn't want to lie about anything. He just wants to get to the bottom of this, and he wants to know the truth. Really well-made movie, once again. Not an action movie, per se, but really good drama. Radiance Films really kind of excels at putting out these films that mostly I've never heard of. How to Kill a Judge, I'd heard the title of before. But films I've never seen that are just really solid foreign films from the past that might not be as fun and wacky and wild and edgy and, and uh, pulse pounding as other films, but are just solid. And the treatment they give them are just so good. So extras again, one for the last time. Sing along if you know the words. 2K restoration of the film from the original negative presented with Italian and English audio options, original uncompressed mono PCM audio. New interview with Franco Nero from, 19, from 2022. 
and that wouldn't be new if it was from 19 anything. From 2022, it's 13 minutes. New interview with Alberto Pizzata, author of Re Regia Damiano Damiani from, uh, from 2022. He was the biographer of the director. That's 34 minutes. Some of what he says does cover a similar ground to what's said in some of the other extras, but it's still an interesting extra. Uh, Lessons in Violence, a new video essay on the film by filmmaker David Cairns from 2023. It's 22 minutes. English and Italian trailers. The English trailer is really just the Italian trailer with uh, burned in, like newly created English subtitles. So cut to, they basically took the transfer of the movie. I think maybe in both cases, or at least in the English language. They basically took the English trailer and cut in bits from the new transfer of this film and any subtitles or new video subtitles. So it's kind of a recreation. It's not an original trailer. The audio is. Um, you get new and improved optional English subtitles for the Italian audio and English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing for the English audio and the reversible sleeve and all that. So those are all the discs, but wait, there's more. Hey, look, what's that? What's this thing that it's so thick it looks like another disc? This is a book, like, this is a sizable, legit, like, I would pay for a book like this that is about uh, Cosa Nostra, Frank Nero, and Three Mafia Tales by Damiano Dano, Damiani. Nice uh, dashing. Oh, I forgot to mention, in How to Kill a Judge, he's got the mustache. So if you're like, no mustache, no sale, you, you do get a mustache in here. And uh, I'll just kind of do this. This is a thick, heavily illustrated book with a lot of writing and a lot of photos and, like every possible poster for these movies. This is like, this is what you want in a text supplement for a set, because usually they're just kind of like reiterating some of the stuff that was already on the disc, but this clearly is like, it's a supplement, you know? It's more than what you got on the disc. So you get that book, you get three discs, you get a very sturdy case. I mean, I'm not kidding, I don't do this to be silly. I mean, that's a pretty sturdy case. It's not a case that if you leave a disc out of it, it's gonna get all misshapen. So this is, this is really, a pretty amazing set. Available now from Radiance Films is Cosa Nostra, Three Mafia Tales, Franco Nero in Three Mafia Tales by Damiano Damiani. Excellent, excellent set.